What's up everyone, we are back with another quick explanation of localization basic terms. This one will be about I-18N. What is this mysterious acronym? It stands for internationalization, which is something that I can barely say. Let me give you an example. So internationalization, first of all, is a set of best practices, is a process which makes localization possible or makes localization easier. Uh, so it's done on the source files when we create something that will be localized later on. To give you a very basic example that's mentioned a lot when we talk about internationalization, it's about software localization. So software, as you know, is written as part of a, it's written as a code. Okay, it's a bunch of if else's and it's created by developers that don't understand localization that much. And they can put some of the strings which will then appear on the UI for the users, like for example, cancel, right? That's a that's a string that will appear on a button in the UI. So if it's part of a code, it will probably not be sent to localization. It will not be um, available for localization because people in the localization don't understand the code. And if you're a developer, you don't want to send it to some people who do some stupid localization because I mean, they would mess up the code and the functionality of the software, right? It's very precious. So one of the examples of internationalization practice is to move all the strings which need to be localized into a separate file, which will be called a resource file. And let's say we have a cancel, OK, and all the other messages that appear in the UI, in the app, in the software, and they need to be localized. So this way we are separating the things that need to be localized from the code because code is not supposed to be localized. Code is a machine language for the computers to know, to understand what to do in certain cases. Okay. So now that we have these things separated into resource file, we can easily localize uh, this file and then it gets localized, translated, it comes back it gets integrated with the software and that people can change their language, swap the language and use their different target language that they want. The benefit of internationalization is that it makes, first of all, the localization possible. Like I mentioned in this case, if the string is hard coded, it would be very difficult to localize the software or it makes the localization run smoother and faster and cost less money. So to give you an example, let's say this is our example number one, where we do not have internationalization. And example number two would be this one where we do have internationalization happening before that. Okay, so it can shorten the amount of time that we need to localize because engineers don't need to come up with some crazy workarounds. The process is smooth if the source is properly internationalized internationalized. So internationalization is something that should happen before. It's sort of an investment that you do on the source files. But if you do it properly, you're going to get the benefits on the localization side, the effort should be lower. And consider the fact that you're localizing something into 30, 50, 100 languages. So you do internationalization on your source language just once. If you do it right, then all of these 50 100 languages will be that faster and cheaper and that is internationalization